All right, we are now out of executive session. And at this point, we are going to vote on the uh, contracts that we have seen. We have three supplemental contracts that we'll be voting on separately. So at this time, I would accept um, a motion to accept the school superintendent's recommendation. So moved. All second. right, Ms. Ms. Bramlett and Ms. Kelly, is that, is that a second. right? A second, yeah. Okay, um, any discussion? All those in favor, please say, raise your, uh, well, raise your right hand and say aye. So. There you go. <laughs> aye. All right. I'm but I'll okay. aye for the ones I can vote on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, this is the ones that, this is the one that everybody can vote on. Okay. So, uh, okay, good. The vote is unanimous. And moving on to the supplemental contracts, um, let's see, looks like, um, Debbie, you need to abstain from voting on this one. Correct. This would be the Lancasters. So uh, I need a motion to accept this recommendation. So, so moved. Moved. Second. Okay. Bailey and somebody. Bailey. Beverly. Beverly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Say aye. 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 Okay, good. That was unanimous with the exception of Debbie. Okay, the next one is going to be on Amy Huff. So, Dr. Huff, you don't have to raise your hand on this one. I'll need a motion and a second. I'm making so a motion. Sorry. Okay, that <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I heard Stephanie first and Ricky second. So, um, all those in favor, say aye and raise your hand. Aye. Uh, uh, okay, good. Right. Great. All right, and That'll next work. we have. Um, Who's that? Robin Box, which I believe, Mr. Bailey, you'll want to abstain from. Yes, ma'am. So, so I'll need a motion and a second for that supplemental contract. I make the motion. All right, Ms. Kelly. Second. Oh, second. Uh, Jordan seconded it. Okay. All those in favor, raise your right hand and say aye. Aye. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of hands. Okay, good deal. That is done. Okay, we need one on the personnel, the actual, the normal personnel report too, Miss 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 Stevens. Okay, um, so we'll need a motion. We've reviewed that, so I'll need a motion. Uh, so moved. Was, second. Okay. Uh, Doctor Huff seconded that. All those in favor, please raise your right hand and say aye. 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 All right. Very good. Aye. Moving aye. right along. Did we get that done? Yes, yes. ma'am. Oh, okay. Moving on to the board agenda. Uh, Mr. Raper, you have the invocation, and I think by the time we meet for this regular meeting, we're going to need one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Better be good. So, so you you get you get to do this, and I don't know if we'll have a if, if we can have a flag in the room. We'll pledge allegiance to. How's that? Um, okay, and we'll need approval of the minutes and the agenda. We won't have any committee reports. Um, don't think we're going to have any superintendent's recommend, uh, uh, recognitions. Not looking that way, no. Unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and Ms. Stevens, yes. uh, Dr. McMichael had asked to take off the number one under uh, Title I right. RFP for discussion later. So we'll need to just take that off. Under new business, Title One. Yes. Yeah, we'll need a need a make that adjustment to the agenda correct yep okay i just lost second it. that i'll second that okay all those in favor we good okay i just lost the agenda isn't that sweet i can pull it uh, up hold on just a moment it's your heart okay so the only other thing, uh, Guy Rogers is supposed to do us the do the yearly recap from the tax assessor's office. Um, it's my understanding he may just send us a written report. Correct. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Dr. Green. Do we have a... Does anyone have any questions for Dr. Green? We'll uh, we'll try to expedite through this since we're all okay. online. If you have any questions, I can turn him turn him on real quick. Nope. Okay. Well, Chris, I'm moving right along. Chris, how's, how's it going with the meal deliveries? Um, I'm going to give you, a, we'll, we'll discuss that in just a couple minutes. Okay. Uh, 
Yep, sure, sure will. Okay. Jennifer Houston's next. Anybody have any questions for Jennifer? Congratulations on the audit, Jennifer. Yes, that was great. Yeah, yeah thank you. That was that was yeah, great. Thank you, Jennifer. Great job. Fully clean and, and clean audit, no no findings at all. And, and, um, and I will share with y'all that, that I talked with the auditors because they have to call me separately for whoever the board chair is separately. And they were just raving about how cooperative uh, our folks were and how great everything was and telling me that they wished every audit would be like that. So just thought I'd share. I can't be quiet now. I'm sorry, but I just have to, you know, not all departments get to have this yearly test. So I'm kind of um, fortunate to be able to have an outside agency come in, but with Pam McNamara as our audit coordinator and the business services staff and all of our directors, our principals with the leadership of executive cabinet, Dr. McMichael and the board, there's no way we're gonna fail. We, we have a great, great, great district here. Hey. Yes. Hey. Hey. Pat yourself on the back, pat yourself on the back. That's right. Okay. Any other, any, any questions for Jennifer? Uh, not about what she's got here, just uh, what's her idea about the uh, what we, we voted on last month about with Tom Owens and our. Uh, so we've been talking to him um, and, and Miss Stevens can actually uh, pipe in in a minute, but we've been talking to him basically daily and he's just watching the market and um, he's just going to put those out. Um, when he feels the right conditions. And right now it's not the right conditions. We're gonna wait right. just a little bit longer. Okay, so we're sort of in a holding pattern? Yes, sir. Okay. Rates jumped, Ricky, just so you know, like um, almost two basis points. Um, and so when I talked with him about that, um, he thought that the timing might be uh, coming up pretty soon to do that because rates had started to go back down but he is waiting on that. The other issue too is that we have to take this before um, the judge, uh, the Superior Court judge to have them sign off on this and they're under an executive order also not to do any business, okay, okay. to shut down. So the other issue is when we can get that done. Okay, I was just wondering how that might affect us. So thank you, thank y'all for that update. Sure. Okay, I think that's it for Jennifer. Looks we will good. go to Joe Perno. Any questions for Joe? All right. Any? Hey there, can y'all hear me okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. They still uh, able to work out at uh, Bear Arts and Science Academy? Yes, sir. They're still full steam ahead out there. Uh, no delays, no equipment issues. So they're they're rocking and rolling. When are you going to get the keys, Joe? Excuse me? When do you get the keys? Uh, it should be at the end of April, 1st okay. of May. That's, wow. our, that's our goal. Awesome. Pictures look great. Yeah, yes. Good. Yeah, and those, those are a little bit behind, maybe a week and a half old. Uh, so we're a little past that, but uh, it's, it's coming right along. Excellent. Any other questions for Joe? Okay, let's move on to Dr. Moten. Any questions for her? All right, very good. Well, this is just moving right along. Are we still live? All right. We still there? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Yep. I'm here. Okay. I'm still having a little issue with this. It looks like the next thing on the agenda is going to be the annual code of conduct review. Yes, ma'am. And uh, Dr. Thompson's here. Do you have any okay. questions? Anybody have any questions for Matt? Any comments, Matt? No, sir. It uh, sat on the table for 30 days and we had no formal public comments. Great. Thank you. 
Okay, do we want to put that on the consent agenda? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, under new business. Now, Title One Chromebooks. That's what we're going to pull off and put. Yeah, that pull one, that's when we pulled. That's when we okay. pulled. Okay, so audio enhancements, data cabling. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay. I like the way we handled that but with um, picking the second low bid with Tech Optics. I like the way we did that and, and not just defaulting to the first bid because right. of the time. Yeah. Yes. The time frame is what got us there. John's online too if you have any questions there. So. Good job on that, John. Time is money. That's right. That's right. Good. So, do we want to put that on the consent agenda? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Right. All right. Next is design, design services for the new elementary school. And the superintendent is recommending approval of Cunningham, Foran, Matthews, and Moore to form design work on a new elementary school. Oh, my Lord. Um, <laughs> do we want to put that on the consent agenda? Does anybody have any questions about that? We use Cunningham, Foran, Matthews, and Moore a lot. Yeah. No problem. No problem. All right. Consent agenda? Yes. Okay. Design services for the second phase of Barrow Arts and Sciences Academy. And again, this is a recommendation to approve Cunningham, 4M, Matthews, and more. Consent agenda. Okay. Yes. All right. The only, okay. the only comment I would make about those, everyone, is okay. just that uh, it doesn't mean we're going to construct classrooms, you know, here in the immediate future, but we just want to be ready uh, for that when that time comes and when funding's available and, and, and you all feel it's appropriate. We just, you know, it'll take 10, 12 months to design a building. So we just want to get that ball rolling. Okay. Joe, uh, while we're talking about it with the previous one about the new elementary school, do you see much of a change in the design of what we use lately? I think we probably will, uh, Ricky. Um, you know, Lindsey Pope, Brayfield, Clifford designed our last one. It's been a good building, uh, but going with Cunningham, Forehand, Matthews, and more, we may look back towards a, a version of the County Line Bethlehem uh, single-story building. And of course, you know there, there'll be some adjustments we'd look to make to that uh, with the front entry and safety and that and that sort of thing. But um, yeah. But we'll probably move in that direction. Thank you. Okay. Joe, do you have any idea where we're going to put this new elementary school? <laughs> uh, either of these buildings, we would look to build um, out on the uh, campus there at Austin Road. Okay. We, we've got the room, and we're looking to create a similar cluster type arrangement as Winder Russell and Winder Barrel High or Hammond Morris, Yargo, Appalachia. Good. Okay. So we want to put that on the consent agenda? Yes. 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 Everybody's okay with that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. yes ma'am. All right. Insurance bid. The superintendent recommends awarding the liability insurance bid to Georgia School Board Association and awarding the workers' comp insurance to Jay Smith Lanier. I have to step away from one moment, but I am okay with that. Consent agenda okay. for me. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, is everybody okay with that? Obviously, we've done our homework on this. Yes. Yes. Okay. Very much so. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Okay. So we're on. That's on the consent agenda, also. Yeah. Uh, and the Bassa Collaborative Area Furniture. Superintendent recommends awarding the turnkey job for the collaborative area furnishings to Georgia Specialty Equipment. Anybody have any questions about that? Hearing none, we want to put that on the consent agenda? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Barrow Arts and Sciences Academy Startup Media Collection. Superintendent recommends purchasing a startup media collection for Barrow Arts and Sciences Academy from Follett School Solutions, Inc. Any questions? Ms. Persinger, if you have any questions. 
that consist of primarily books or what? Uh, what we asked for a startup collection of both print and electronic books to staff the, or to put in the media center. Okay. All right, we good with that on the consent agenda? Thank yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. I want to go back to high school. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? You'd be an alternative school the first day, right? <laughs> you know me too well, Doc. <laughs> okay, the next item is the state of elementary furniture bid. Superintendent recommends approving the new bid for 1,545 student chairs for state of elementary school to Sheffield School Supply and to use this bid and the prior bid approved on March 3rd, 2020 for other student and teacher furniture for growth and replacement up to $50,000 out of the general fund. Anybody have any questions about that? No. A lot of chairs. Yeah, it is a lot of kids. Um, okay, is that okay for the consent agenda? Yes. Great. All right, before we move on, I'd um, like to give you a quick update on just how things have been going. Um, and we've got the cabinet members are here and they can chime in at any time. And if you have any questions, we're here to answer. You know, we got, we got thrown a big curveball. And um, I, I cannot tell y'all how proud I am of the staff and the uh, students and the families of this county. Um, it's been an amazing thing to watch and to be a part of. Everyone has made the flip to distance learning, to distance feeding, to all of these things in no time. And uh, that goes from everyone from the members of what we call our crisis command team that meet every morning, um, which is the cabinet, myself, um, Shinley Roundtree, Matt Thompson, and then we bring in others as, as we need to. Um, we meet every morning. That's been great. And then, but really where the, the people out in the field, you know, the, our lunchroom and our school food nutrition folks in there cooking for those kids every day. Um, we've got bus drivers that are now helping deliver, um, and they're going to be taking that portion, portion over pretty much um, helping Bethlehem with the actual deliveries when we come back from spring break. Bethlehem Church and some and our other volunteers have just been amazing. I've never seen anything quite like what they've done. And I have to give a special shout out. I could shout out to a lot of people, but um, uh, Ellen Petrie has been working with them uh, along with Shinley and um, working through all of that. And they've just done an amazing job. Um, you know, we really didn't need to use transportation for, for the first part of this because we had so many volunteers that wanted to deliver those on their own and be a part of that. So that's been just an amazing thing to see. We're feeding anywhere from about um, uh, 2,300 up to 3,000, depending on the day from what I've seen. Um, wow. So it's been, been pretty, really, yeah, and that's two meals a day that they're getting from, uh, from the school system. So that's been incredible. Um, teachers, I can't sing their praises enough and the parapros and, and everyone at the building levels making a flip in basically a day to distant learning it's just been, and um, we weren't quite quite there yet, where, but um, I don't think many people would, would know it. Um, they just have done a, a, just an amazing, amazing job of, of getting out in front of things and, and connecting to the kids. And, you know, the, the education piece and the academic piece is going well, but the connecting to the kids and make, you know, because you have to remember, especially for our younger students, they didn't even have time to say goodbye. Um, like they would at going on a summer break. The kids just went on a, on a, on a school day for it was a teacher work day, and then they never came back. Um, so they've been out doing the parades and, and reaching out and calling and emailing and, and doing all these things, reaching out to find out um, our principals headed this up, reached out to find um, which students didn't have devices and um, to, to access a distant learning. And I, I, out of all of them, our IT, I call them small but mighty heroes. They have just done an amazing, amazing job of helping the schools and the principals and the APs get those things, uh, those Chromebooks out, um, getting them ready to go out, which is really no, no small feat in and of itself. But, you know, there are laws about filtering and there are laws about things that can and can't be on those Chromebooks. It's not, it's not just like we could buy them, take them out of the box and hand them over. They had to touch every one of those and um, do, do something to them and then clean them all. And they actually went and sanitized them all before they went out also. So, um, you know, we have a, like I said, a very small but mighty um, crew on that. And they've been amazing. They've got us up and running for board meetings. Um, shout out to uh, James Shuler. He's been our absolute back here. He's done an amazing job getting us all going. It's just really been 
it's been really amazing to see what we can do. And, and the teachers just seem so much more energized, even though they're, they're dealing with their own kids and they're at home with their families and dealing with all that. But the creativity when they're not dealing with the, you know, the minutia of the classroom behavior issues and those type of things, um, it's just really allowed them to kind of stretch their wings and, and, and fly. So I, I couldn't be prouder of the superintendent. I've always been proud to be the superintendent of, the, of this district, but I, the past few weeks, I, it's been the pinnacle of that for me. It's really been amazing to see. Chris, I'm, um, I'm leaving someone out and I apologize, but um, there's just so many good things going on. Our custodians um, are in the buildings you know, every day and deep cleaning and, and, and working and making sure we have a presence there. It, it's just been incredible. Chris, what are, the, what are the greatest needs that you see for volunteers or anyone else in, in the system? What do you need? Um, I think keeping up the volunteerism for the um, delivering the foods. Uh, we, we're going to be using the school buses um, going, like I said, going forward. So we've got the actual delivery part. I do worry a little bit about some of our bus drivers, you know, being exposed. So if we could, we want to be sure to have some volunteers on there that can actually jump off the bus and hand out things. Um, that type of thing. Um, like I said, our, our, our volunteers from the community have just been outstanding and, and remain to be. And we're going to see a little bit of that drop off just because, you know, people have their own families and we're also being quarantined a little tighter now. You know, we just had the, the piece that came through uh, regarding um, shelter in place. So some folks are going to be a little more reticent to get out. So I think we're going to have to yeah, to, but, they, but then again, we've got our bus drivers. They've been chomping at the bit to get out there, and, and our school food nutrition folks are still going. But I would say probably out of that, that's the biggest. Um, we've, I think we've gotten pretty much, I think, John, you can, or Ken can tell me, how many devices have we handed out? It was, um, I, I don't know what we did in the last uh, day or so. Um, last time I looked, we had over 1,300 devices. I suspect we're going to be around 15 to 1,700 when we're done. Yeah, so we've handed out that many devices since we started this. And uh, we're going to... Let me just mention, we're still handing out devices through this yep. week. So that number is expected to continue to rise. I know we've got schools scheduled for uh, device distribution all the way through Sunday. Yep. So we'll be that number will continue to go up. Right. Chris, um, one of my concerns is our school drive, school bus drivers. What's the average age of these drivers? Are they uh, getting they on up there? Some yeah, some of them. Uh, they definitely some of them fall into the high risk category, and that's one thing we're watching. And again, that's why I really you know said that about the volunteers. Somebody that's actually we're trying not to get close. We're we're keeping the the distance of six feet um, as much as we can with with all of that. Um, so it'd be somebody to kind of go off, set off the food wherever they need it to be picked up. But we're, um, yeah, that's still something that we kept a close eye on. Um, and with our school food nutrition folks too. Doctor, if, if I could come in on that a little bit. Uh, my family and I, we, we've been out uh, delivering some of the food and most of the time you'll, the, the people have gotten used to it. They have a place, a box or a chair or something on the uh, right. porch. You just drop the food off. You really don't have any contact with it. Okay. Right, yeah, yeah, so it's, um, well, that's good. Do I fall into that high risk category? Yes, sir. It would be great to have a volunteer on the bus that does that. So it just keeps things moving a lot faster than having people driving their personal cars and having to get out. Right. You know, so um, I think that the bus drivers should be pretty safe if they have volunteers there that can, you know, get out and, and put the boxes out where they need to be. Sure. Ms. Right. Krause, Krause, I'm pretty sure that every driver is just driving the bus. We may have drivers that are on the bus as the deliverer, but the driver of the bus is not having to get off. We do have a second person on every bus to right. be able to step off and make that a quick uh, process. And I agree with Mr. Bailey. Um, we're just generally dropping off the food without right. there having to be any kind of personal interaction. I understand. I understand. I'm just... I'm thinking it might go a little bit faster than, you know, people in their personal cars. I understood it take, took quite some time for people to get around to the um, different homes. So, you know, bus drivers know where they're going and, and are used to it. So the, um, there's also, they're doing print temperature checks on the volunteers and everything every morning and the bus drivers also. So awesome. that's awesome. Yep. 
All right. Dr. McMichael. Oh, sorry, Lynn. Sorry. That's okay, go ahead. Um, quick question. I just, um, it was brought to my attention by a community member earlier today that Hall County um, announced that they are turning over all of their um, PPE to Northeast Georgia Medical Center. Um, right. Do we have anything that we, um, I know they give to us, so I kind of think, you know, at this point, oh, yeah. if we have anything, we could donate back to them. Yeah, you know, that's a PPE. great thing. Yeah, we've actually, um, we've either done it or are working on that. Ken? Could, yes, um, we have reached out both to the hospital as well as our um, emergency services providers. And the hospital said they were good, but John Skinner helped make the connection with emergency services. And so they took a shipment of uh, protective gear from uh, devices and, and gloves and that sort of thing from us. I don't have the exact details on all that they got, but I do know we have already facilitated the donation of um, some medical equipment that we had at our schools over to EMS. Great. Well, I'll say this. Let me make a comment about that. Um, I know Wynne Bear High School, my daughter was over there one day and for something, and she volunteered to clean out a closet. And in that closet, she found uh, the N95 mask, some uh, gowns and gloves and all sorts of stuff that we were able to distribute to the hospital that came out of Wynne Bear High School. Good. So that was done. Um, I would encourage y'all to pass the word with these schools that have chemistry class classes, labs, and stuff like that. They may have uh, eye goggles, safety goggles. Um, you never know what kind of mask they may have that they're not using. So those things are out there just to be discovered uh, in closets. We will uh, make sure the principals take a look for sure. That's great. That's Another well, anything really, we can do to help free up some PPE would be greatly yeah, appreciated. Another, sure. another real, really neat thing that's going on too uh, is um, Sims and CFIT, um, the AIM program, and the high schools are all there. Lee Bain and Ben Manning, who's, if you don't know Ben, he's the uh, engineering and uh, teacher over at Sims Academy, and a group of others have gotten together and they're actually 3D printing. We have about 20 something 3D printers going, they're 3D printing the masks. No, um, not that are going out too. So uh, we've got that going on kind of in the background also. So um, oh, just, cool. uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff going on. Is that something they designed themselves, Chris? Or They did. Um, ben um, Manning actually designed one and then they tweaked it a little bit and um, working with some of the first responders and the, and the um, I think somebody at the hospital, and um, so they tweaked those and now they're, they're printing them up. So, uh, but you know, that's worthy of news. That is Get Shelly on that. Get Shelly yeah. on that. Yeah, she's on it. She's, um, she's been monitoring and been a part of all their meetings. So when, once they get it to the point where, where she's, we're ready to go, we'll, we'll definitely get that out. But it's been, it's been a really neat thing to kind of watch. If you could get that information to me as well. I will submit that um, to the Innovation Crescent. They had reached out to see if there were any innovative things going on in our communities. Okay, we will get that to you. Uh -huh. Great. Now, what's being done at high schools where the, you know, we talked about the buses and the, the deliveries we're making, but what about the ones with people that are coming to pick up the lunches? What they are still doing that. That. Yeah. What are we yeah. doing to protect those workers, you know, as far as- I, I went by the other day, so I can actually, um, talk about this. What the workers do is they put the meals on a cart and then they push the cart away from them. And then the person gets out of the car and picks up the bags, puts it in their car, and then the car leaves. Okay. Good. Okay. We may flatten the curve after all. We may do it. We, um, I tell you, we got a lot of people working hard and, and following the rules. And that's the, that's, you know, that's the, that's the good thing. Everything, everything that they're doing, they're, they're staying safe with. And, uh, and, and that's Perfect. A, yeah, okay. extremely important. All right. Is there anything else? Um, Lynn, I noticed that we've got authorization for committees to meet and we got cl clean school committees that are coming up. Are we doing yeah. that? We will not be doing that, I'm afraid. We'll, that, that'll be suspended I mean, until further notice. Well, I'm the chairman of the one in April, so... To you people on the committee, we will not be going. I bet the schools are really clean. <laughs> I bet they're clean. They are. They're, they're extremely clean. <laughs> yeah. I actually 
I actually ride on the it. bus and hand out food. How about that? There you go, do it. Yep. There we go. That'll I actually great. saw a picture of one of our stools, and it was a shot of the hallway. You could have eaten food <laughs> off that floor. It was so clean and shiny. They Seriously. Are, they are doing an amazing job. Um, well, I, I shouldn't even bring this up, but, you know, we have to do a teacher of the year this year, and I know that falls under the same thing as high school graduation and that sort of thing, but I hope somebody's kind of working on that. Well, let me tell you, is, I'm chairperson of that committee. We've selected all the members of the committee. We have scheduled, rescheduled pickup dates for the packets to be picked up, and I think all the members of the committee have been notified of that, and we're going to work through it as best we can, and if you know, we may not be able, we can certainly read their reports, we can pick up the packets, we can read their work, but when it comes to visiting them in the classroom, I don't think we're going to be able to do that. We might be able to interview them uh, if there's a small number of us. Yeah. And keep I, and wash our hands. I think we should be able to interview. Now, I haven't heard, we can Zoom. We can Zoom. I haven't heard anything about picking up the packets, so... Well, let's see. You should have heard something from Megan McNally because she has sent that stuff out. I will I will shake her tree and make sure she does that. Okay. Okay, because I, I haven't seen anything, but then uh -huh. that could just be my email. I have some. Okay, computer. okay. Well, I have seen it. She sent it to me. I assume she sent it to everyone else. Okay. Uh, I forget the dates, but anyway, I, I'll make sure you get those. Okay, great. Looks Thank like you. It, it's uh, Miss Stevens. Ms. Kelly and Mr. Ritter on that committee with me. Right. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Is there is there anything else we need to talk about? Um, I will just throw out to I wanted to mention um, the high schools. You know, uh, a lot of our concern um, for students is with the class of 2020, and I've sent you all some updates on that uh, via email. But um, high schools are are and and the command team are are working hard to make plans and then backups to those plans. Um, we're very committed to making sure that um, these students get a uh, graduation ceremony at some, at some point and uh, hopefully a prom maybe at some point and, and all these other memories. It's just going to be right now they're just um, just pushed back and nothing's been canceled at this point. Um, also honors, honors night they're working on some plans to try to make that work um, but but we do know that that's a very very it's stressful for all our students but extremely extremely stressful for our kids that have worked, you know, 13, 12, 13 years to get to this point and then have oh, this, yeah. this happen. And their parents. <laughs> oh, yeah, parents also. Parents, Chris. Yes, I'm, I've got two at home. So, um, <laughs> the, uh, but, but anyway, again, just want the community out there that's listening to know that we are not, we, we are very committed to making sure that we do the best we can for those, for those um, students. They, um, they deserve it and they deserve everything we can do to make it happen for them. Good to hear. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Remember that our next, our, our regular board meeting will be on four fourteen. Okay, because of spring break, and that's when it is. Yep. So there being no further business coming before the board at this point, we stand adjourned until our regular board meeting.